Our next topic is functions. The first thing we need to do is come up with the definition of a function. I do expect this to be memorized. We covered it last year. Um, this will be on your semester final. It will also be on the test that you take for this section. So the definition. A function is a rule. That maps each element in a set A, which is called the domain, into unique elements. in a set B called the range. So again, a function is a rule that maps an S there, each element in a set A called the domain into unique elements in a set B called the range. At a minimum, you need a function is a rule that maps each element in the domain into unique elements in the range. That gets all of the key points in there. Let's talk about these two parts here, this set A and then this set B. The domain is our inputs to the function. Um, when we plot functions, we plot them on a coordinate plane. This would be my x values. Um, we also call these the independent variables. Our range is the output of the function. If we are graphing them or we have a set of ordered pairs, it would be the y value. And these are the dependent variables. So each of our functions has inputs and provides them to outputs. Okay. So the other thing we need to talk about is how to represent functions. Okay, we can represent them as words. We can represent them with an equation. We can draw a map. We can have a, a group of ordered pairs. Or we can have a table, which is another way to represent that set of ordered pairs. And the ordered pairs, the table, we can end up putting these on a graph. I'm going to take the same function and I'm going to represent it all of these different ways, um, not necessarily in that order. And the function is take a number, double it, then add three. So those are my words for the function. It's a rule. Take a number, double it, then add three. And the way I would represent this as a function, I could either use it in function notation where I give the function a name. In most cases, that would be like f, g, h, 
and we say, what variable am I going to use to represent that number? And in this case, I'm going to use an x. And then I would write the equation for that function by thinking about the rule. I'm going to take a number. Well, that's x. I'm going to double it. That means multiply that by 2. Then add 3. I'm going to put a plus 3. So that would be the equation for that. Um, next one is a map. Well, I'm going to, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a table because from that I'm going to come up with my map, my graph, and all of that stuff. So for the table, I'm going to take some inputs for my x values, come up with my y values. I'm just going to pick some random numbers here. I'm going to pick like four of them, negative 2, 0, 1, and 5. Then I'm going to use this rule on each of those numbers. So negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. Negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. 0 times 2 is 0. 0 plus 3 is 3. 1 times 2 is 2. 2 plus 3 is 5. 5 times 2 is 10. 10 plus 3 is 13. That gave me my table. From that table, I can come up with a set. Um, Hopefully you remember from last year, sets I can put in between curly braces. So I'm going to come up with a set of ordered pairs. And my ordered pairs are points x, comma, y's in between parentheses. I have a set of these ordered pairs. Then 5, comma, 13. And the curly braces mean a set. Okay. Um, those are my ordered pairs. A map, I'm going to call this my inputs or my x values. These are going to be my y values. I'm going to randomly put these in here. I'm going to put the 1, the 0, the negative 2, and the 5. I'm going to put a, these in the order that they were listed. And then I am going to make arrows in between how they map. Negative 2 goes to negative 1. 0 goes to 3, 1 goes to 5, and 5 goes to 13. I purposely made that messy just so that you could see that, hey, it's okay if they crisscross, go to different things. Um, and the last one is a graph. And I'm just going to plot the points. I'm going to plot 2, negative 1. I mean, negative 2. Negative 1. I'm going to plot the point 0, 3. I'm going to plot the point 1, 5. I'm going to plot the point 5, 13. 2, 3, 4, 5. That's 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And 13 would be up here somewhere. If you had a whole sheet of graph paper, you'd be able to do it. And we should know that this is linear from what we've talked about before. Um, and that means that when I graph and I were to play connect the dots on these, I would make a straight line. And if I had an actual piece of graph paper, that would have been a straight line. So here's what you need to know. Going back to the definition of a function, each thing in the left-hand part can only go into a single number in the right-hand part. So let's talk about that. It's okay to repeat numbers on the right in both the mappings, the table, and the xy coordinates. It's okay to repeat numbers on the right. For example, the following function. In words, this would be take a number and square it. I'm going to give you five values here, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Negative 2 squared is 4. Negative 1 squared is 1. 0 squared is 0. 1 squared is 1. 2 squared is 4. As a map, my x's are negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. My y's, I only have three of them, 0, 1, and 4. 
And if I were to draw this mapping, negative 2 goes to 4, and 2 goes to 4. 0 goes, negative 1 goes to 1, and 1 goes to 1, and 0 goes to 0. It's okay to have two things pointing to something on the right, as long as you only, you have to use everything on the left, and you have to use everything on the left once. Okay? I'm going to give you a table that is not a function. This is not a function. 0 goes to 5, 2 goes to 3, 2 goes to 6, and 5 goes to 7. Notice here on the left-hand side, I have repeated values that go to two different ones. This is not a function. Okay, so I'll draw this as the map. I have 0, 2, and 5 for my x's. For my y's, I have 3, 5, 6, and 7. We typically write them in numerical order when we're doing our mappings so that um, later on when we identify what the actual domain and range is, we always do our domain and range from smallest number to biggest. But here I have 0 going to 5. I have 2 going to 3. And I have a 2 going to a 6. And I have 5 going to 7. You notice here, my part that is bad is the fact that I have two different things leaving the inputs of my function. Okay, Our inputs have to go to unique outputs. 3 and 6 are different, therefore they're not unique, therefore that is not a function. So it's not okay to have two coming from the left, or two x's being going um, going to two different numbers, it is okay to have two different x's go to the same number. So that's the first part of it. So let's just look at IXL really quick for um, what you're going to be doing here. You're doing the first one with this lecture. And... Um, We're going we're to talk about the first one, then we'll get to the second one. So identify functions. Fairly straightforward. It says look at different things and tell me whether they're a function. Okay? So look at the set of order pairs. Is it a function? First thing I do is um, I'm going to try to zoom this in for you. Sorry that it's... Uh... I look at this. If every X is different then it is a function. It's automatic. Every x different, it's a function. Every x is different, it's a function. Okay, these two x's are the same, but and they're going to different numbers. That makes it not a function. Look at the graph. Okay. Anytime you have points, you can kind of see my mouse here. I'm sorry, it's kind of small. Anytime you have points that are on the same vertical line, it is not a function. So if I were to, so this one would not be a function because these two points are on the same vertical line. I have two things leaving going to two different numbers. On 12, it's going to two different numbers, so it's not a function. Um Everything from the left is going out exactly once. It is a function. Um, negative 16 is used twice, going to two different numbers. It is not a function. Right here on the y-axis, it's going through two points vertically. It is not a function. Everything on the left is going to exactly one number on the right. It's okay to repeat numbers on the right. It is a function. Hey, notice this says four minutes. It said about two and a half minutes before I even started here. Um, and I'm already at a 75. So here, 
It's not a function for two different reasons, the number three and the eight. So that's the first one that it asks you to do is um, here, this one graph. This one is a function because each dot is at a different X value. That's the first assignment in there. The second one is identify functions using the vertical line test. And the vertical line test means, hey, if you can draw a vertical line and it touches the graph more than once, it is not a function. So let me go ahead and write that down for you. Words, vertical line test. If a vertical line can touch any portion of a graph more than once, it is not, actually I'm going to write it out, the graph is not a function. Again, vertical line test. If a vertical line can touch any portion of a graph more than once, the graph is not a function. So I'm going to go to IXL. I'm going to click the identify functions from the vertical line test. Here, I have a whole bunch of places that it is not a function. Um, anywhere to the right of looks like negative 2.6 or so, I can draw a vertical line. And it would touch the graph more than once. It's not a function. So just look at the y-axis here. The y-axis touches it once, twice. It is not a function. Here, a vertical line would only touch my graph once. It is a function. Here, um, right about negative two and a half, I could touch it three times. It is not a function. Here, a vertical line could touch it anywhere, and it would only touch it once, so it is a function. Which one of these is a function? First one, no. Second one, no. Third one, no. Fourth one, yes. I'm going to go back and zoom to normal value. Which one's a function? No, no, yes, no. So it's, this one's a function. Um, this, which of these is a function? That one only. This one only. This one only. Look at that. A minute and a half and I already got to 70. So that's where I'm going to leave you. Um, that's what you need to know about functions that will get you through the 3.1 and the 2IXLs.